So now we're going to be looking at uh, real options. So real option is something that gives you the right, but not the obligation uh, to um, take a particular action. So we're going to be looking at the case of the gold mine. So uh, the option there that we're going to be looking at is if the price of gold is low enough, uh, you have the option to to mothball the mine, to not keep it active, to and then to reopen again if if the price of gold is is higher uh, yet further into the future. So the value of real options uh, is typically increasing uh, in the value of the underlying uh, states. Uh, what's what's driving uh, the risk in this case? And there's a close analogy to to financial options. So, for instance, if you look at a call option in in finance. Uh, this is something that gives you the right, but not the obligation, to uh, to purchase a stock at a particular price. So there's a close analogy, and we're going to be looking at one particular example here. So here we've plotted in Excel a very simple case. So assume that S here, the state, or the price of gold, if we're looking at a case of a gold mine. So running from 1 here to, to 17 here. So if you're running this mine, uh, it you would need to always have it open, always be in operation. Well, at low prices of gold, you'll be operating at a loss. So negative here. And then if price of gold is, is higher, you're running a, a profit cure. Uh, we're now interested in the real option. So the option to mothball the mine, the option to keep it closed if uh, the price of gold is too low. Okay, so in this case, for simplicity, we just said, you know, we could think of some small cost of, of keeping it mothballed, but for simplicity, set that to zero. It's not going to be central for our argument. So if, you know, price of gold is low enough, you just keep it closed, make a profit of zero. But then if price of gold is, is higher, uh, you, make, uh, you make a profit. Okay, and we're going to be interested in seeing how does the value of the option to close the mine depend on uh, the expected values or the risk that we are facing uh, in the price of, of gold. So uh, we've here plotted the relation between the price of gold, yes, here on the horizontal axis and profits uh, measured on the vertical axis. So let's first uh, look at a case where there's no uncertainty. So assume that the price of gold is equal to eight for sure. Okay, so read off uh, the, uh, the profits here, and those profits in that case are equal to uh, three. So we could think of this as profits at the expected value uh, of, of, a, of, of uh, the price of gold, if this were indeed a random variable. But if it happened to realize at the at, um, expected value, these are the profits that you would have. We're then interested in how uh, the option of closing down the mine or how the, the, the value of this mine uh, depends on the amount of risk that you're facing. So just as a benchmark, let's look at a case where there's relatively little risk. So we take a mean preserving spread in the price of gold, but we make it relatively small, okay? So with a probability of one half, S will be equal to seven. So slightly lower with probability one half. So large number of time periods, half of the times will be at, an expectation will be uh, at seven and half the times will be at nine in expectation. Okay, so we can confirm that that's a mean preserving spread in the price of gold. Since we're looking, so with probability one half, we're going to be at seven. With probability one half, we're going to be at nine. And the expectation of that then is eight. So the expected value of the price of gold is the same as we looked at in the certain case. We're just introducing a bit of risk here. What's expected profits in this case? Well, from what we know before from looking at uh, risk neutral decision making, when we have a linear uh, relation between the state and uh, our, um, our outcomes, uh, we expect that uh, we're only going to be interested in the expected value. And that's going to be the case here as well. But let's just confirm that. So with uh, probability one half, profits are going to be uh, two, which is 
what we get if we're reading off the profit relation here from uh, at, at the price of seven. And with probability one half, and be at nine, and instead have a profit of four, and the expected profit then is equal to three. So this is the same case as with the same expected, expected profits as profits under certainty. But now we come to the you know interesting part, uh, the real option part. What if we take a larger uh, increase in the dispersion? So say that with um, S is equal to two with probability one half. Okay, so you know it's not eight, it's with some probability, or not some, with the probability of one half, it's you know six units lower, six euros lower, say, uh, down at two. And with similar to make it a mean preserving spread, we need to also look at price of gold that's six. Uh, euros higher, so price of uh, price of gold will be fourteen with a probability of one half. So just to confirm that this is really a mean preserving spread, we look at the expected price of gold. So it's one half times two plus one half times uh, fourteen, and this is indeed equal to eight. Okay, but what about profits in this case? Okay. What are expected profits? Well, they're either going to be low, all the way down to zero here, or they're going to be high, up on 14, one, time, one half times. And what are, if the price of gold is 14, uh, the uh, profits are equal to nine, and this is equal then to 4.5. So 4.5 being higher than, than three. So here, an increase in the risk uh, increased the expected value for this decision maker, okay? So this is as if the person were a risk lover, uh, but you know it's, it's a risk neutral uh, gold mining firm here, but they still uh, have an increasing value uh, in, 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 the, in the risk here. What's going on? Well. You can say with probability one half, we're down here. With probability one half, we're up here. So just as in the case of uh, when we looked at risk lover, we're evaluating a strictly convex function. We can tie a string between two points on this, uh, and that string will be above the function. So the expected value here, combining these two endpoints, will be on, on, on this line and will be then at 4.5, okay? And if we took an even greater mean preserving spread, if we increased the risk even more, we would have an even higher, even, even higher um, um, expected profit, okay? So this is showing some of the intuition, one intuition for why when there are real options, they are in the value of them are increasing in the amount of risk that you're having. And in this sense, they can make a risk neutral decision maker act is as if uh, she were a risk lover.